Tristram is safe. I go now to Chaldeon, the great city of the East. It has fallen before one of the last lords of hell, Belial. I will set the city free. And here we are into Act 2 with the Witch Doctor. Made it to level 16 before killing the Butcher. I'm feeling good about the voodoo. So what did we get? We didn't get anything really good. So we're going to sell it all actually. Don't need to disenchant any of that. No need, no need. Most of my items a little more money off of selling them anyway. Them. And I don't need the shin bone either. I'll just leave it here. Nice and glowy and legendary looking. Here we are. Chaldeum. Jewel of the East. Uncle Deckard loved this place. He wouldn't now that it is under the spell of Belial, Lord of Lies. I can smell his stench on me here. Our paths lead apart. You search for Belial, and I will seek Magda. Her end will bring rest to Cain's spirit. In my time, I have often argued with the spirits. I did not always believe that they knew the true path for me. I do not understand. No, you do not. When the spirits and I look at you, we agree. We say, this is a good man. There is no darkness in him. There never was. Confront what you call your sins, and I say you will find nothing there. Test your faith and prove me wrong. I cannot lie. That has occurred to me. But if it were true, it would ruin everything I fight for. Everything. Mm, I like the way the witch doctor confronts him. The way he does it with the spirits. Caldeum. Everything Uncle Deckard left me leads to this place. It's strange. I first met him here when I was only a child. And now his loss feels heavier than ever. He was right about everything all along. We have to stop Belial before it's too late. Guard, where did these refugees come from? I am not a guard. I am a Shearer, commander of the Iron Wolves. We saved these refugees from Magda's coven. It even now wreaks havoc throughout the borderlands. Then we share a common foe. I seek Magda, but I do not know where to find her. She's heading toward Alcanus, but has blocked the road behind her. However, there is another way. Through the Kasim outpost. Din, that is where we shall go. Emperor Hakan threw his entire court out of the city. Tyrael and I learned that while the Iron Wolves were fighting Magda in the desert, the Emperor replaced them with Imperial Guards who bar all from the inner city. I suspect that the Iron Wolves were sent out to die. Belial has made his move. We must find a way into the city. As a child, I explored Chaldean while Uncle Deckard studied here. I can get in through the sewers. Be safe and learn what you can. When I return, Magda will trouble us no more. Be careful. Alcarnas sounds like Magda's trap. This gate leads to Alcarnas. You will need to follow the long road over the canyon bridge and through the Kasim outpost. Magda will pay for her wickedness. Take heed, traveler. Cultists guard these desert roads, and they will slay any who pass. They may find that difficult. I have come to kill them. I'm their leader. Then you must not go alone. I shall accompany you. Ah, uh, yes. There are illusions out there. Mirages to some. But I can see them for what they are. The coven's foul magic. They will lead you to your death. I appreciate your concern. But these cultists are known to me. I do not fear their traps. She looks... different than anyone we have seen. Her skin is as soft and smooth as polished ivory, and her eyes, they... No. Uh, Why are you two whispering over there? 
No, no reason. Yes, Cormac, the Templar, and the Enchantress. I love the interactions between these two. Before I got too far, I wanted to mention my hate relationship with Act 2. No, I did not forget the word love in that equation. This is a hate relationship I'm with Act 2. Mainly because it's covered in bees! And so are you if you don't move a lot. I would rather not discuss this sand wasp. These overgrown insects wouldn't be notable whatsoever if not for their exceptionally poisonous stings, which, alas, killed my young apprentice. I thought he would be more careful when I sent him to retrieve a sample from the hive, but <laughs> his parents did not understand my perspective. <laughs> Such a nice guy, ain't he? The Lacuni, or Panther Men as they are sometimes called, have inhabited the desert wastes east of Calvium for thousands of years. The large males are the tribe's leaders and protectors, while the agile females are expert hunters. Mostly they are primitive and reclusive creatures, although they will attack if cornered or hungry. Stay back! They're in the rocks! Oh dear. Yeah, this initial part of Act 2, very narrow. Ow. Not easy to maneuver, especially when these lacuni are just dropping all over your head. And then you've got the bees. Why? Why the bees? The stinging and the poking and the... I hate these bees. One of the single most annoying things about this be act. Careful. They are very near to us. That cannot be. The way is blocked. You should never have come. Demons will face to your bones. I've missed killing these cultists. Come on then. Well, that worked in my favor. How did you know about the ambush? I am an enchantress. The ways of magic and illusion are familiar to me. My name is Arena. Thank you, Arena. But tell me why you are truly here. I sense you have a greater purpose. Well, I am also looking for someone. But here, let me clear the way for you. Captain, from behind! Protect the people! Iron Wolves! They came from behind! Uh, one of the big guys. Those big guys are incredibly dangerous. Cannot count the number of times they've killed me as my if barbarian. Not for you, the Lacuni would have eaten well this day. Is the road ahead so filled with danger? More than Lacuni stalk the road. Cultists cast their spells from two desert layers to disguise the Black Canyon Bridge. Let us head north to the Howling Plateau. The cultist magic seems to be emanating from there. Yes, the Lacuni. Probably the other reason I hate Act 2. It's not all bad. I like the Oasis parts, or at least I like the look of the Oasis parts. They're kind of nice. Visually. Visually nice to go through. Some of the monsters there are fairly dangerous as there is well. There's another illusion here. The cultists tried to hide their footsteps. Their spells are weak and easily countered. If we follow these prints, we can find their lairs and halt the rituals. I will seek out any other traces Hello. of their magic. So I do think, though, the Lacuni and mainly these wasps, these bees, being the most frustrating and difficult parts of this act. They seem easy enough to dodge at first, but then you start getting champion packs of them. And you realize how they like to put you through bullet hell. If you've ever played a bullet hell game, like Ikaruga or something like that, then you know what I'm talking about. Serious, 
Serious madness. Look, more hidden footprints. It seems that the Fallen are indeed creatures of demonic origin. The old Haradric tale claims they were once powerful servants of the mythical Asmodan. They purportedly aided him in his battle against the prime evils, and Diablo later punished them by twisting them into the small, stupid forms they now possess. No, oh, more footprints. Oh, hello. <laughs> Avoid the bees. Ah, stop moving there. See, prior to patch 103, these bees were even more annoying because they would run away more often. They still run away more than I like. They are casting part of the illusion inside. Ah, uh, pain mongers. Alone? Not so bad. They have that nice big attack that you have to avoid, or you end up like Cormac. Uh, that one big hit will ruin your day. I have been instantly killed by a group of them doing that to me before. And therein lies the problem. By themselves, they're not too bad. You get them combined with anything else, or a, say, a champion pack of them. There should be another be ritual trouble. at a cellar to the east of here. Look, more hidden footprints. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, yes, yes. The doom pressures. Annoying. Not the worst type of monster I've dealt with. But they can be difficult to take out when they burrow. Which makes them in champion packs like this um, something you have to be wary of, that's for sure. Because it can make them very difficult to kill, possibly make them enrage if you're in inferno mode, if they take too long to die. And of course, then they love to just burrow and chase down a ranged character, so sometimes if you're in a group, <laughs> the melee end up having to chase them down before they pop up on one of your ranged characters. The bodies of innocence are strewn across the sands. We must make them pay. Their lives are used to cover dark rituals. I will take this. So the beautiful thing about Spirit Walk here is that you can still cast abilities while using it. Which I just did. I popped it, ran past, and while I ran past, I did a soul harvest on them. Allowing me to get my stacks without getting in danger. Very useful strategy for using soul harvest. We've got, yeah, here we go. An event over here. Don't leave me here alone. I'm so alone. That girl is not real. Really? Ooh. That was nearly bad. I got blocked in there for a moment. Hidden footprints. It seems like these pressures are affected by slowing area effects, even when underground. Oh dear bees! I'm covered in bees! I don't like it!
any other dungeons or surprises this way. I gotta admit that charge that Cormac has really helps with uh, taking out these things because it stuns them Look, temporarily. More hidden footprints. This is one of the cultist lairs. They are casting part of the illusion inside. Lift lever over here, get a treasure chest. I kind of like how all these treasure pieces are hidden in these areas. Some of them you have to fight for, some you just get to pull levers for. Act 2 is fairly neat for that. I'll give it that. It's more annoying in the monster department. Although there is a uh, part later in Act 2 that's fairly desolate and empty, which is not exactly fun to run through. The rest of it's pretty nice, though. Even the desert here has got something to uh, look at on occasion. The oasis being one of the best parts. When I get there, you'll see that. If you haven't been there before. Hello. Hello, oh, this goes. Need more mama. I could have totally spirit walked to get out of there, but the coven's magic. Okay. Let us go to the bridge. <clears throat> uh, pardon me for that. Okay, so looks like I get a new primary here. We're gonna go ahead and try out these explosive toads. It mutates my Plague of Toads to fire bullfrogs that explode for 169% weapon damage. It's fire. 169 is a decent amount of damage here. And they explode as fire, which means they're going to do an AoE effect. This also means they have the potential to do far more damage since you're still firing out three toads. Have you journeyed to Kejistan before? I rarely ventured beyond the bounds of Westmarch in my younger years. After the order took me in, I had little need to travel. Alright, Spirit Barrage. This is a new one on me. Bombard the target with a Spirit Blast that deals 190% weapon damage as physical. Okay, and that's in my Decay Realm. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be getting rid of my Zombie Charger for this Spirit Barrage. 62 mana. It's less costly than Zombie Charger. But it also does a little bit less damage. So we'll give uh, Spirit Barrage a chance here with our Plague of Toads being our close up. There you go. Kaboom. Those poor frogs. Tell me, what shall you do when Matthew is dead? Belial and Asmodan, Lord of Hell, plan to destroy us all. I shall destroy them first. How curious. You must be the one I was meant to find here. Hmm, Sirocco Caverns. I like this Spear Barrage so far. It definitely makes a really nice ranged ability to uh, combine with something short range like the frogs. And as you can see there, in short range, those uh, massive explosions from multiple frogs. Uh, definitely did a lot of damage killing that group that popped up right in front of me in an instant. And here, well, it helps if I actually hit the thing. Not bad. It's a pretty neat spirit barrage there. Single target, range damage. Now the question is, is it in a line? It looks like it's an indirect spell, so if I target beyond... Like if I'm trying to hit from behind... Yeah, oh, it's indirect! Pardon me. Okay, so Spear Barrage has got another benefit to it then. If you're trying to hit a target beyond a uh, group here, you know, say you've got a caster, a shaman, something that's resurrecting monsters or something like that in the background. This is a great spell for hitting them. As I saw there, it just went right over the heads of anything else nearby. So it's going to hit what I want it to hit. And for a decent amount of damage. Yeah, 
this. Die to plagues of toads and eels. I bring forth the apocalypse. <laughs> Nothing like running around just spamming toads everywhere. Huh? Ugh, savage rockworms. Those things are freaky. It weirded me out the first time one of those things ate me. You just disappear from the screen for a bit. I thought I was dead the first time it happened. Okay, so apparently the explosion on the toads has some issues for hitting certain objects. Spiders. And bats and toads, oh my. Me. Oh well. I think I somehow managed to shoot those toads behind me. I'm not entirely sure how that happened, but, uh, yeah, we'll go with it. We will let it be. Well, that was neat. The, uh, spirit from the spirit barrage just turned around when I missed and hit the target eventually. So it looks like the uh, only issue there is that you have to pretty much be on target with your click, as where some skills, since they fire in a straight line, you can lead a target or uh, fire in a general direction Why and hopefully hit something. All of the time. Our motivations are complete contradictions of one another. I am driven by honor and the good of others. He is driven by greed and a calling that comes from below his waist. Alright, yeah, let's just go on to the second floor here. Of course, the good news is if you click with, uh, with Spirit Barrage and you do manage to click the enemy, it looks like it doesn't matter how fast they are, you're going to hit them. Right, let's put this down. Need more mama. Just traveled right past them. That was a worthy foe. Glorious. All glory to the Hypno Toad. Or explosive toads, whatever. Same thing, right? There's really not much else here in this area. A couple broken bridges.
I think it is time for you to know my true tale. I am not from Chaldeum. I learned these spells 1500 years ago. My sisters and I pledged our service to a man of great power. We called him the Prophet. He trained us and placed us in a magical slumber to awaken in this era. I am to prevent the Lords of Hell from invading. Much of the great magic of this world has been lost over the millennia. Fight by my side. We can destroy the Lords of Hell together. All right, we'll keep our Templar for now. Now to find the Kasim outpost. A few different spots of dungeons and spawn. There was one down there. on flaming toads of death. Oh dear. Hello. Jailer. Oh dear. I wonder, can I escape jail by using spirit walk? That I need to find out. Ah, uh, yes. It is a root removal indeed. What a monstrous creature. This is kind of a mana-intensive build. I'm wondering if I shouldn't... Oops. Shouldn't go from Spiritual Tomb to the Gruesome Feast to give me a bit more intelligence and to be able to pick up more mana as I fight and grab health globes. In fact, let's go ahead and turn that on and see how it feels. It's a little less maximum mana and a little less mana regen. But I might make it up from the health globes I pick up as I fight. See, now the unfortunate thing here is that I can't see what my stacks are, but 365 intelligence. Let that drop here. Now it goes to 304, and that's with my 5 stack. Lose the 5 stack down to 84. So I got 65 additional intelligence from the stack of health globes that I picked up, but it's unfortunate. There's nothing on my bar to tell me how many stacks I'm at as far as the health globes and intelligence I'm getting from them, so I don't have stacks of gruesome feasts to keep track of. I think it's a real shame. And here's the other shame. The buff bar only shows up to five things. I've actually run into a problem on my barbarian because of that. Uh, when grouping, anyway. Uh, grouping with a monk, I had a constant aura on me, and of course he would use his aura to improve our survivability, so that's two things on my bar. And I was using a, for a while, I was using a Whirlwind build with Life on Hit and uh, Life on Crit for my my particular Whirlwind build. I had a decent amount of critical strike rating, so I was able to keep my Whirlwinds going pretty much and was getting enough health back from the critical on Whirlwind as well as the Life on Hit. It was working okay. Thing is, I had to make sure to maintain uh, my aura, which increased my uh, critical strike chance and fury generation. I just had to make sure I put it on every so often. Not only that, but since I was using sprint, I had to make sure that I had that constantly, so I, I ended up just having to keep counting in my head when to use sprint again, because it was coming to the point where I could not see sprint dropping on my bar, because it just wasn't showing up anymore. Yeah, five things on the bar. I really don't know. I mean, there's all this space. I could go all the way across here, and I don't think that would be too terribly cluttered or too big of a deal. So I'm not sure why they made that decision. 
This is no trick. The road is blocked. I must go through the Kasim outpost to the west. Yep, here's uh, where Magda blocked the road in her path. Looks like we found a dungeon, a deserted cellar. Oh, poor guy. Looks like he died anyway. Poor eyes. Second of souls. And he's an illusionist, apparently. Dead illusionist. Dear bees. I gotta say, this Spirit Barrage is probably one of the best spells you could possibly have for dealing with these bees. Just because it just does not miss. Though the champions are larger and the lunatics more devastating, it is the shaman priests who lead the fallen. These shrunken, unintimidating demons can easily kill an enemy with their fireballs, but it is their ability to resurrect their imp allies that allows them to command such high respect from their peers. Yeah, man, if dude could resurrect me, yeah, I'd give him respect. <laughs> I want to be first on his resurrection list. Let's try and get a bit of that back. There we go. Yeah, speaking of resurrections... Oh, the elusive one. Oops, gotta get some mana here. He is running away. I need him to die. I do not have enough mana. Oh, not good. Hold on, give me some mana back. There we go. Wasn't as much as I was hoping for. Get them all in a narrow corridor so I can spam toads at them all day. There we go. Get more intelligence now, so I'll do more damage. There you are. Gotcha. Tag! You're it. Bees! Hate those things. That was a little tricky there, especially for this build. Not exactly the uh, easiest pack to get through. I probably would have died attempting that on a higher difficulty level. But I do like Spirit Walk. That allowed me to go through, gather some soul harvests, and uh, catch up with the elite at the same time, so that was very nice.
the adversary is before us. Uh, really fallen. Where did that be? Where did that be? There, now I've got five stacks, but I doubt I'll find anything to kill before... Yeah, see, I hit the wall. Oh, well, one B gets my wrath. I can live with that. Some reluctance that I write on the seven lords of hell, for they are the greatest of the demons, and even whispering their names seems to poison the air around me. They are divided into the lesser evils, Belial, Asmodan, Duriel, and Andaril, and the prime evils, Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo. All right, I'm going to do a quick look over here in the western stinging winds just to see if there's anything else out there. Anything good. Doesn't look like it. No, we do get the ruins, level one. Oh, spiders. I always tend to forget those towers spawn those. Ah yes, Belial's minions, withering deceivers, and the ability to turn invisible and be invulnerable while be doing so. These serpentine demons are Belial's favored servants, and he has granted them some of his skill in cunning and illusion. Deceivers will cloak themselves in the familiar forms of their enemies' companions and friends, waiting to strike when the moment is opportune. It is only then that their true forms are revealed. <laughs> There we go. And even got a bit of mana back. The deserts of Kegistan are majestic, expansive, and full of stinging swarms of insects. They may seem a minor nuisance, but these vermin carry numerous strains of pestilence. One of them was trapped in my boot once, and my foot swelled up to the size of a melon before the infection cleared. What horrible creatures! Agreed. Alright, stop it. Stop it with the dancing. This is not Jazzercise. Oh boy, another attack. Let's... Oh dear. Alright. Put that down. Ah! They found me! Go. Find more like that. Got plenty of intelligence boosts there. This build's not faring too bad. As much as I don't really care for Plague of Toads, this explosive Toads rune is working out pretty nicely for these groups of enemies. And then of course Spirit Barrage is working out nicely to take out ranged targets. I like it. Of course, I'm still not using an actual secondary skill. Or, yeah, I'm using Grasp. I just have renamed. Of course, it helps if I pay attention, right, so I don't die. 
All right, Cormax got me though. He's my bud. He got my back, right, bro? That's right. Yeah, I just got him in different orders, cause I kind of like having my spirit on secondary. Beautiful thing about uh, elective mode and being able to move things around so I can use them on whatever key I want. Exciting to come through here has made this go a little bit long. I was figuring I'd get to the outpost and be done with it. That would have been right around half an hour, but hey, it's okay. Most of my videos have been about 50 minutes lately, eh? As long as you guys don't mind, I'll keep moving at a decent clip here. Oh my. My power grows fast. Oh yeah, level 18. Oh, I got some new and interesting things to try. Spider Queen consuming spirit. And sacrifices black blood. Alright. Uh, well, since I'm going to be ending this soon, well, let's take a look, shall we? Corpse Spiders, Spider Queen. Summons a Spider Queen that bursts Spiderlings, dealing 16% weapon damage as poison to enemies in the area. Lasts for 15 seconds. Can only have one Spider Queen summoned at a time. Well, that's interesting, because that being a primary means you can only use it every 15 seconds. So instead of spamming it, you just put one down. Hmm. That seems more appropriate for, you know, like a secondary, you would think. Uh, speaking of which, what secondary do we get? Haunt is just consuming spirit, and the spirit returns 8 life per second. That's not bad. That's some health back every now and then. So that would help with my survivability. With this build... Hmm, what else did we get? Black blood. Icker erupts from the corpses of zombie dogs and slows enemies by 60%. Hmm... A slowing, huh? Alright, that's some things I'm going to have to think about. I think I'll cover those in a bit more detail next time, and I will put a build together for them. Because that looks like something I want to spend some time looking into. And then I can go into detail about that on a future video. So let's get through here. Let's get to level 2. It's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. You know, if they're just going to sit there and jazzercise, I'll just put eels underneath them. That doesn't get, in, get them to move. Nothing will. Looks like they'll wiggle them serpent hips, don't they? Are we there yet? Yeesh. Oh, here we go.
overburdened. Oh, really? Wow, and only one item to get rid of. Ha ha, I'm gonna have to come back, aren't I? No, oh, I only got one of them in that. Yep. One item here. So, yeah. Right, then. Let's start the inventory show a little early, shall we? Be one of my videos without it. Should be fairly quick as I'm just selling anything I can't use. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Sell the stuff that I absolutely can't use. And of course, that wasn't much, was it? Alright, uh, which potions are good? 250, 400, I have 700 life, so I should start using these. 551, so let's go ahead and sell that. Sell that. And go ahead and keep those over there. Anything else I can sell real quick? Three vitality, that's fine, sell that. Hey, strength on a voodoo mask. Get rid of that. Another helm. Wood strength and experience. Get rid of that. Hey, look, strength on armor. I'm sensing a pattern here. Dexterity on pants. Hey, here's a chest piece. Nah, not all that interesting to me, though. Hit adds life. No, thank you. 14 DPS dagger. No. It's a two-hander, 19.1. No. Two-hander, 16.5. No. 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 Hey, that's got a bit more damage. I lose the cold. The life after each kill, which isn't a big deal. Maximum mana, which could kind of suck. Um, and mana regeneration. I have a feeling this is better. 50.99, 56. Oh, wow, it is better. 56, huh? I think I want to keep my regen for now, though, to tell you the truth. I think I won't keep that. Alright, 10 intelligence and magic find. I'll take that. Hey, strength and attack speed. You know what? Of course, I could have put some of those weapons on Cormac here. I completely didn't do that. Hmm. Most of my items have almost no blood. No, let's left look. On them. What do you have? I gave you a 16.2 axe, right? Have almost no blood left on them. Give me that 22 back. That's a two-hander. Can't use that. All right, Cormac. Guess what? You get a new weapon. 22.8. Does it go up? 5.5, 6.3. Yes, it this. does go up. Hallelujah. This 25 strength amulet going Just to you. Thing. Ooh. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that on here where I have an experience ring. You can go ahead and have an experience Thank ring, you. Cormac. Ooh, hey. Eight. eight experience on an amulet. I'll take that. And it looks like, let's see, the rest of these. No, and what is that, maximum mana? Yeah, I'm not worried most about that, more so than regen. Have almost no blood left on them. Okay. There it is, the inventory show, before we really got the finish here. Let's go in this dungeon, get the resplendent chest, get to the checkpoint, shall we? This desert has gone on long enough. I say that, and yet I have so much more desert to traverse. It's going to be a long, desolate segment. Filled with lizards and whirling dervishes. Whirling dervi? Dervises? Dervises? I hate Mises to pieces. Oh, I'm just 
killing them in one shot with this uh, five stacks of uh, soul harvest and five stacks of health globes. Or what I could assume was five stacks of health globes. Since I don't have a bar buff. A bar. You know what I'm saying. You feel me, my brother. Oh, hello. Pop one of these under you. That was a worthy foe. Glorious. Right, does Spirit Walk take mana? It does, 28. Thankfully, 28's not a lot. Hmm, looks like no resplendent chest, just a elite monster barring my way. Which is perfectly fine, because elite monsters equals loot. Oh, there it is. Hey, there is one. Lord of Lies is the most elusive of the seven evils and is a master of deceit. It is said that he manipulated Asmodan into revolt against the prime evils. This began the Burning Hell's civil war, which ended with the dark exile of the prime evils to our mortal realm. I'm going to be honest. Belial as the minion of the or the Lord of Deceit. Uh, I gotta think that maybe he's just been dealing with simple minds for so long that he's lost his touch. I think he's just had it way too easy when it comes to uh, deceiving people because I didn't see it. Yeah, I'm gonna come out and say it. The city has many secrets and I still remember most of them. I can get into Chaldeum through the sewers if I avoid the Imperial Guard. While I'm out, my friend has sworn to take down Magda. It won't bring Uncle Deckard back, but we'll all be relieved when she's gone. No pesky gods. Alright, well, that pretty much does it. Hey, look, more vitality and monster experience instead of magic fine. I'll go ahead and I'll take that. And what about that? 19 decks. Nice amount of decks. Shame I don't need it. Hey, 2 to 4 damage. That'll replace this ring, and that means Cormac gets an actual ring for damage. There you go, buddy. This will aid me. Alright, there we go. I'm going to end it here at this waypoint. That was a checkpoint, was it not? Yes. So, we'll move on into the Kasim outpost on the next one. This one is already gone nearly an hour, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you all for watching and for dealing with the exceptional long segments. I think it's going to be ending up just constantly being that way, considering how long some of these segments are in the exploration. Um... I can try and cut it down further uh, if you guys think that that's better. I know that sometimes smaller videos are easier to digest, easier to watch when you've got spare time. A half hour is much easier to find in most people's schedules than a full hour. Alright, well with that being said, this is Kage Kaze. Thank you again for watching the Witch Doctor playthrough. Uh, I do have other videos going up that haven't been uploaded yet, but they'll be uploaded by the time this gets up, so I'm hoping you guys do enjoy those as well. Alright, thank you very much. Kage signing out.